Mark Rubens? Here. Joe Yag? Here. Steve Ford? Here. Gigi Gleason? Here. Liz Ray? Here. Mike Kobus? Here. James Gardner? Here. Absent, Carolyn Kramer. Good afternoon, committee uh, chair Liz Ray, vice chair Kobus, and committee members, Ted Schiffone, Harbor Division Managers. I'm here to present the 2021 budget for the harbor. There we go. All right, what I'll do is provide a summary for you, and then if you have any more detailed questions between myself and Cindy with finance, we'll try to answer um, all the questions that we can. So looking at the budget for next year on the revenue side, you'll see that slip, renter, slip rental revenue for next year is approximately $5.7 million. Harbor facility leases, which includes the real estate leases throughout the harbor, that includes base rent as well as percentage rent from all of those tenants throughout the harbor. Parking revenue, which includes all of the harbor parking lots where we share revenue with the city for the collection of, those, uh, of that revenue. Then some miscellaneous revenue, uh, including the wait list, transfer, and then that management uh, fee is a, is a real estate management fee that they take uh, from some of the tenants. Inspections and miscellaneous revenue, and then investment income on our current fund balance uh, that we have uh, with the city right now. So total operating revenues for next fiscal year or next budget year, approximately $8.367 million. And um, what I do want to point out, you see down there, use of fund balance, $135,000. This is different than what we have done in the past. In the past, we have run an, a, a revenue budget and an expense budget, and typically we've been slightly in the black every year, and that money goes into our fund balance, and then that fund balance is assigned to certain capital improvement projects throughout the harbor. And going forward, we've elected um, not to do that the same way, and the reason for that is anytime we do a capital improvement project, we are subject to a 10% fee from engineering to oversee those projects. Now, over the last couple of years, we've done several projects, as you've seen in the harbor, uh, related to our restrooms. And we were able to avoid that 10% fee because, in fact, we basically general contract those projects. We supervise, we pay all the bills, and, and we follow up on it. So engineering really wasn't necessary. Um, going forward, we want to make certain that that's not an issue for us. We don't see any need to pay a 10% fee uh, to have something supervised that we're already supervising. So when you look at expenses, um, we're going to see an increase in some areas, especially in the maintenance area, that includes uh, some of those improvements to the harbor restrooms that you've seen in the past. So looking at our expense budget for this upcoming uh, budget year, you'll see maintenance at $3.3 million, police at two point, nearly $2.4 million, administration, which is harbor administration, as well as some expenses associated with that at 1.1. Tideland lease is what is paid to the city for the harbor uh, lease of the property. Lifeguards charge us $215,000, which is roughly I think it's 11 percent of their budget and then property management charges a fee for their um, services to the harbor we have a depreciation charge of four hundred seventy four thousand dollars and debt service of one hundred thirty five thousand dollars and some other miscellaneous fees so what you'll see is in fact um, that the um, expenditures are more than the revenue and the reason is we're going to cover it with that fund balance and this report is probably slightly different than what you're seeing right now and that's because a lot, a lot different and that's because finance is continually fine-tuning 
the numbers within the budget, and this was bas basically a revision that was provided to us today. So it's, it's very similar, but slightly different. So the expenditures would be $8,503 on the first page? Correct. And, okay. That is the, the accurate? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then Harbor Capital Improvement Plan. This is, again, where we take money from our fund balance, which is basically the reserves that the harbor's been saving up over the past 10 years. And we look at doing major projects. As you know, the JDOC replacement project, still scheduled for 2021 pending permits. Um, and then future projects include some parking lot repairs uh, in, in the following years and uh, YDOC and JDOC riprap design. So the riprap um, throughout the harbor has been sloughing into the harbor and we're going to need some pretty significant repairs at a future time to repair and replace that riprap. So there'll have to be an engineering design of, of doing that going forward. Well, that's city council. Um, so um, with that, I will sit down and try to answer any questions that you have. And if there are specific questions I can't answer, uh, then hopefully Jennifer and Cindy can address some of those. Ted, could you go, please go back to the first page so we can write down the actuals that we are at right now? Thank you. So the use of fund balance is not 229,000. It's down to 135,000. Excuse me, uh, Chair Ray. Uh, that's correct. That's so that the harbor basically has a balanced budget for next budget year. Okay. Could you describe that uh, a little more simple terms for me? The uh, use of fund balance, it seems like an odd category. I've never seen one before. And, and you're right. Coming from the private sector, it's not a term we would typically use, but in the, in the uh, municipal sector, fund balance is basically like a savings account. It's basically, it's what? It's basically like a savings account. It's, an, it's money that's been earned over the past several years that has been put aside um, for future use. So it's earnings from previous years. It, that seems... Uh, a trifle to me when you look at the overall budget. Is there another account set aside for uh, like a reserves for emergencies or unexpected repairs? Uh, committee Member Ford, correct. We, we currently have over $4 million in the fund balance account right now. A good portion of that is going to be used for the JDOC replacement, as you saw, at approximately $3.4 million. The harbor also has approximately $1 million in a separate fund balance account that is only set aside for emergency use. So that would be something where we'd have to go back to uh, the Harbor Board as well as yourselves and request use of those funds if there was some unexplained situation. That's good news because, you know, the slip runners were concerned about the JDOC improvements. They thought that cost was going to be passed on to them and a slip increase. No, that, that those funds are available today. Great. And the JDOC rationalization is going to drop a lot, isn't it? Uh, committee member, yeah, uh, it should, yes. We've already been through um, some little design changes, and I believe the last estimate we have is around $3.1 million, $3, $3.1 million. So there is going to be some savings. That $3.4 million also includes an engineering charge, which we are hoping not to have to pay because Bellingham themselves brings their own engineer down for the entire time frame and does the inspections and, and, and um, review of that entire project. That includes an ADA compliance ramp? Correct, that includes an ADA ramp. No physical changes to the shape of the top? Correct. Any No. I am. I am aware, yes. 
Mm -hmm. We, we've gone back to Bellingham, and um, the reduction comes from not having to drive some pilings that were going to have to be driven before, but otherwise there's not a lot of cost savings in the dock itself. It was primarily in the mobilization to, to drive those pilings. Somewhere around there, yes. The park at July 1st. Okay. And so, right now, we have a whole bunch of people parked on Oxford Spot. I know we're talking about Spot. We have a whole bunch of people parked on the other side of the harbor. They're not generating revenue. Correct. When is that going to change? Because the restaurants are opening and there's really no customers. Correct. So, and we're talking about budget, so I, I agree. <laughs> um, beach parking is still restricted. So, until, until beach parking itself uh, can be lifted, we won't be able to generate much parking revenue. Right now, the trailer, boat trailer parking lot is open, so that is generating revenue. Um, they're collecting money from the meters on Pacific and how about I can't answer that, I'm sorry. Right. I don't understand why a quarter mile away they're taking parking meter money, but there they're not. You know, again, I, I, I want to say that that's considered beach parking. How about when the broiler opens, the parking lot be open? Correct. So I, I will let you know. Again, I know we're talking about budget, but since it did occur today, we are beginning to open up some of those lots right away. Mike. With this uh, current number that we have for uh, JDOC replacement, uh, I believe uh, a few months back we thought it was going to cost us a little less because we weren't going to involve the Coastal Commission, but now we are having to seek their uh, approval and I'm getting, I'm looking for a timeline like I always am, Ted, right. uh, in terms of when we might start seeing some actual Bellingham employees. Uh, Vice Chair Cobus, I am con in continual contact with Bellingham and in fact today received an email with an estimated schedule that would include completing it in the next budget year. The problem I see with the schedule is that the permit is expected, is necessary to be received during the month of October of 2020. And if it is received in the, in the month of 2020, this coming October, then their schedule shows completing the docks literally the day before Memorial Day weekend. So I have, knowing how schedules can slide, I have concerns, so I've asked them to stay in touch with us as they get through this process. So again, their schedule shows it being completed in this upcoming winter season, let's call it, but quite honestly, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. And you'll advise us the next time we get together? We'll have more information next time. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the public? We have one public comment. From Paul and Pat Guambois, why is the Oceanside Harbor District paying about $2.5 million yearly for Oceanside Police Department Harbor Unit Police Services when the officers are spending more than 50% of their time outside of the Harbor District writing tickets, citations, and attending to other police business that has nothing to do with the Harbor? Why are we paying for a full-time sergeant when his posted Oceanside Police Department job description indicates that only a partial part of his time is allocated to harbor policing. For example, of how the above funding was specifically used during 2018, please see the information cited in the above article and obtained from the City Oceanside Police Department under the California Records Ask Act request from the city. Thank you. Ted, would you like to address that or? 
I mean, I can't answer the question. We, you know, the police budget is presented to us annually, and whatever the budget is, is, is included in our budget. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Ted. Do we have any questions about the budget from the committee? About the, the About the budget from the committee. Go ahead, Steve. The, um, the police budget, is there going to be some additions next year? It doesn't appear that they're shorthanded. But I heard there's going to be a, a new uh, sergeant, a, couple, a new lieutenant. Um, committee member Ford, I'm not aware of that. I mean, their budget that they've presented would include any additions if there were any for next year. I mean, the budget basically covers that same budget year that we're talking about, July 1 to, to June 30, 2021. So if there were any increases in staff, that would be included in the number that was presented to us, which is the $2.378 million. And you know the funds that are going to be used towards the JDOC? rebuild mm -hmm. sounds like they're going to be depleted and i'm curious how those get replenished because uh, the future project seems kind of low through 2004 2024 there's not a lot of money coming in and um i've been told by uh expert accountants that uh, annually we should be contributing a lot more to that account and and i don't disagree with you committee member ford um, certainly, we need to uh, begin looking at the future, not just what we're doing in the next few years, but what we're going to be doing over the next 15 to 20 years. And one of the numbers in the budget, if, if you did, did or didn't see it, um, we are moving forward with a very detailed consultant survey of the harbor to help us determine a maintenance schedule and how we're going to fund it. So there, there's a lot of questions out there. I'm not an engineer, so I can't walk through the harbor and say, okay, this dock's gonna need to be replaced next year and this piling is gonna need to be replaced five years from now, but we need, we need expert opinion on that. And we're gonna go through that process and we're gonna take a very detailed look at it. But in addition to that, we're also gonna get a maintenance plan and we're gonna get a financial plan that helps us determine how we get to that point. And that can come from various ways. It could come from uh, fee income, but it also needs to, we need to look at the expense side too. So the expense side is just as important as the revenue side in trying to figure out how we're going to put enough money aside each year to maintain the harbor. Yeah, I, I noticed the city uses a lot of expert consultants at huge fees. I'm sure they include in that, but I've not seen it yet. Do they include outside auditors for the entire um, budget? I mean, Stands the reason that uh, we should have some experts looking at it other than the Harbor and Beach Advisory Committee. Don't you agree? I agree. Um, we, we, I, I've personally asked for a, um, an internal audit for the Harbor. I'd love to see one, um, but that's not up to us to, to, you know, to make that decision. I think we should look at it over the last number of years and make certain, you know, we are doing what we should be doing. But I don't believe that there's any funding in our existing budget to pay for any of that. I mean, we receive a, a charge from several departments in the city. Finance is one of them. Um, I don't know directly if it's, there's a finance charge, but there's you know multiple support services from the city that, that we pay for. Because a lot of people are, well, not a lot of people, but I'm one of the people that are curious. Did any good become of the, uh, the Wi-Fi connection contracting that we've uh, sure so the the Wi-Fi contract actually cost nothing to the harbor so How much nothing 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 there was no cost to have the Wi-Fi installed that's a contract with a, a service provider who's installed the entire Wi-Fi system at their cost and at their maintenance cost so there's no revenue for the city at all there will be revenue for the city once they reach a certain point of Good. revenue but in order to get someone to do something like that you have to create some incentive for them to come in. So the incentive was they install it, um, they build the network, they get paid directly. We don't have to worry about maintenance, we don't have to worry about repairs. And once they reach a certain revenue per year, then we begin getting a percentage of that. Great. Thanks, Ted. Joe? Uh, a couple questions. As far as the leases go, 
the broiler and the Jolly Roger, there's a huge discrepancy. Is that due to the times that the leases were signed? I mean, lot size, the Jolly Roger is five times bigger than the broilers with its own parking, and they're paying a third of what the broiler pays. Uh, committee member, yeah, that's a good observation, and I can probably, without knowing their businesses directly, I can tell you that the broiler does considerable amount more revenue than the Jolly Roger does, and both of those leases include base plus percentage. Oh, so, okay. if, so if one is doing more money with bar and you know, take out and, and, and food, we're going to receive more money from so that's that lease. that's a lease and the percentage, not Correct. just the lease. Okay, yes. that makes sense. Okay. And I have the Wi-Fi service at $260 a year this way. It works pretty good. I was wondering, how would you know how many people are using it? I've asked them in the past, we're, you know, they have to provide to us on an annual basis, basically to the real estate department because they, again, they handle that because it's a lease. Um, and I, I don't think the numbers were great. It was less than 100, but, they, you know, it's going to take time for them to do that. Plus, in addition to the, to the annual contracts like yourself, anyone who comes to the harbor and picks up that signal can pay for a day, a week. Yes. a month and, yes, and pay yeah. directly for that too. Okay. Anybody else? Go ahead. Uh, Ted, you mentioned that you wanted to um, have someone uh, look at the rest of the, uh, when we were talking about JDOC and the rest of the harbor. How many uh, firms have you contacted and, and are you any, in any, close to negotiating any type of a uh, agreement with them. Uh, Vice Chair Kobus, so last fall we went out to RFQ basically trying to identify firms that are qualified. Mm -hmm. We had a great response in terms of the firms that were interested, but this cons consulting study is so complex not, no one of them could do it on their own, and so what they ended up doing was forming teams of consultants and subconsultants. We ended up with three very qualified um, proposals to us, and all three firms are fully qualified. So I am in the process of preparing an RFP, which at the next meeting I will present to the committee so you can review, and if we go through that, RFP process then sometime next, again, fiscal year for the, for the harbor, we would begin that study. That'll be upon council approval, of course? Because of the dollar amount, right. yes, council approval, sure. Okay, thank you. And I've got a couple questions on the budget itself, on the, on the black and white paperwork. Such on page uh, two of H and B administration, things aren't. I have discrepancies in adding up here. As for example, on on line fifty three forty five, if you take the fourteen hundred from the thirty nine hundred, you get twenty five hundred. But yet it states that it's twenty five twenty five, and there are discrepancies through all of this that are twenty dollars, forty dollars. $80, um, how, does, how does that happen? I'm going to defer to Cindy on, on those questions. I don't know why they don't add up. So which page is it? It is, you said, H&B Admin? It's on uh, page two of it. It's uh, under 6240-10-101. Page two, or if you count it down, it's page five. Can you move to the podium so we can all hear you? Ma'am? Miss? Cindy? I have a different packet than you do. Sure. Was it this one? I think it was somewhere in here. If she can give you those numbers again. So for the GL account, the one on the left, which one would it be if 5306, the one that starts with the 16204, that one? No, it's 5345. It is traveling. 345, in, okay. Yeah. 
this is just one of many that I found going through this item by item. It says take 1,400 from the 3,900, which should leave you 25, but yet it shows that you're stating 25, 25. Okay, those notes were put in by Susie. So they're just, these notes that are in the comments are used by the internal staff that puts it in. What we're looking at and what we're balancing to when we're looking at the budget is what's in the GL sub ledger or subtotal. I don't know where you are on that. So same line where you said 1,400 from the 39,000. Correct. So it is $2,525 is what they ended up as. Where'd you get the extra 25 bucks? Mm -hmm. See, if this was adjusted, they just didn't change the um, comment. We're basing the budget and, and the actual budget, the right column. That category 5345, everything under that, the 2525 plus the 2475 should add up to that whole 5,000, but we're not balancing to those comments. Interesting. Then what's the point? Um, I mean, yeah, that's the only answer I have. Then, then down on another discrepancy on 53.55, you're off by $180, as opposed to if you subtract the figures. And it goes through like $40 there and so where is the real budget? Where is the, I'm sorry, can you Where that? is the factual budget? The factual budget is the actual GL account sub totals. That's where I'm reading that you have a discrepancy. GL account subtotals, and it doesn't add up to what you're saying that you're supposed to do here. Those two line items under 5345 will add up to the 5,000 that's in the 2021 budget. If you add all of the, well, all the way that it's set up on this report, all the subtotals will add up to the line item to the right for that category. And then at the very bottom, anything that is bolded, like the 324,525, um, almost to the bottom of the page, that is the total for the whole m and category. So all of these s objects, which you know represent different types of spending, those are the line items that we put into the software. And then the software takes though that category for each line item, gives it the total in the 2021 budget column. So all of these subtotals as you go down that um, account number when you add up those bolded items should add up to the uh, total expenses but all of the comments that are listed in the uh, the middle section they could have been a first run of the uh, changes and because we had to do many changes throughout this process because of covid and moving money around that may be why those comments do not add up to what you're expecting in that subtotal column. Do you, I, Jen, do you have a better way to explain it? So the comments are our working notes, basically. And so some of these comments are several years old. You can notice that it will say like FY 1920. Okay. So some of these are old notes that just remain in the software. It's not currently applicable or it's something we need to know just for reference. But the numbers are exactly where Cindy is saying. It's the GL account subtotals and then the 2021 budget numbers. Those are our notes to like communicate changes that we make or why we're adding something or deducting something. Like, for example, in your comment about 5345 travel and conference, Previously, the budget was $2,525. We have found that that is not enough, so we added $2,475. When you add those two together, you get $5,000. That's next year's budget for travel and conference. And that's the amount listed on the farthest of the right of the paper, that $5,000 for 5345 travel and conference. So in other words, as Cindy was saying, the GL is just an estimate. 
is a guesstimate until you add them all up and then it should add up. No, when you add those two line items that are listed at 5345, uh-huh. the 2525 and you add the 2400, okay, it, yeah. it equals 5000. Okay, you can understand the center the comments is basically our comments and working notes. Okay, you can understand our con my confusion. When you're seeing like okay, let's just do a simple math on here and it doesn't add up. Is there a way when we look at next year's budget that we can have a separate budget from 2020 and the projected budget for 2021 so we can see apples to apples instead of trying to figure out what you guys are doing here? I mean, you know what you're doing here, we don't. We can, instead of printing it out in this um, PDF format, we can put it in an Excel format so that it looks cleaner for you so you can see these categories and, and know which columns mm -hmm. that you need to look at. Yeah. And you want a side-by-side -side previous year versus... That would be very helpful. That's what you're asking for? Okay. Yeah, that would be very helpful. Because you can understand if you're just reading the comments and you're doing the math, it doesn't work. Noted. I have a question. Um, going back to the very beginning where the total revenue figure changed, it's down actually 94267 from what we have in our hands. I can see that 50000 of that adjustment was the error in addition in the leases. That was 50000 high, so you caught that. But where is the other 44000 So there were some, well, I, I don't know all of your revenues. Well, I'm going to... <laughs> defer to Jennifer. I mean, the, the budget <laughs> continually gets refined mm -hmm. and not so much by the Harbor Department, a lot of times by the Finance Department try, trying to um, make certain all the numbers balance out. So there's a fine tuning that go, goes on during this entire process, unfortunately. But it's hard for us to know what the real budget is when what we're looking at that we got recently has already been changed. Mm -hmm. So how can we sure. approve Committee member, something where we don't even have the correct figures in front of us? Right. Committee Member Gleason, I, I mean, I agree with you. It's been quite an unusual year. A lot of the numbers were put together pre-COVID and having to readjust you know, during this time is difficult for, for everyone to to make work and we fully understand it. Hopefully we'll have a stable ne year next year and we can provide you with, as you've asked for, and I agree with you, current year's budget, or current year's actual, mm -hmm. next year's budget, prior year's budget, mm -hmm. and, and see exactly where we were and where we're going. Yeah, because I know that when I ran a business, my budget had to, I had to stay within my budget. Now, if there's such deviations from the facts that we are that are given to us, it's hard for us to understand what's going on, to be honest with you. And even aside from if we ignore the, the um, monetary issues in the comments and just look at the GL figures and add those up, there's still errors in those. And it, it's just... It, it's difficult. I mean, I think it puts us in a real tough position to go further with it. Just my opinion. Mike, you had something? Okay. Any, Joe? Um, page three of the first numbered sections, costing budget with notes. A bunch of line items, property management, harbor police, um, would that be last year's number because it's a lower police number? No, that is the current number. The reason why it may be lower, and it was lower from the previous slide that went to the um, budget workshop, we had made some adjustments to the internal service charges for um, as far as some m and changes, uh, fleet charges, and their reflected in the police department and some of it may be in uh, the maintenance department of the harbor because we lower them for the entire city those um, business units were affected so it would also lower your budget okay and the then, amount that you need to 
um, fund that whole. Then the, the one-time request, 200000 even, is that consultant's fees? Correct. Okay. Do we have any other questions? I have one more comment, if I could. Throughout the year, besides just getting the harbor revenue budget on this, the blue stuff that we get, if there is a huge change or a huge addition that we need to do, could that be brought up and really talked about at our meetings? Um, yeah. uh, Chair Ray, um, you know, every HBAC meeting will usually have someone from finance who will give an update, and that's a perfect opportunity to, okay. to go over those details. Yeah, I mean, it, I would ask them to bring it to us since we don't have the budget in front of us and see where it's going. Understood. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, comments? Okay, that being said, um, do we have a motion to accept the budget with the stipulation that for the next time of review we have the, the three other budgets to look at, the three other, the actuals and the, the one that we worked with and the one that's for next year? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to accept the uh, current uh budget projections for 2020-2021. We need a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any objections? One, two, so two. Um, okay, it passes. Uh, before we leave, I'd like to ask Ted, since, you know, we're in such a strange area with the COVID and all this that's going on, I'd like you to see if you could take a look and see if there's some ways that we could trim some of the stuff out of the, out of the harbor uh, budget as far as if it's maintenance, um, overtime, police, um, washing a boat or something like that. If you could take a look if maybe something's being done too many times or if there's something that we could do to cut it back a little bit so we can stay within a budget because I can just see the spiraling out of control. Committee, um, Chair Ray, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're an enterprise business, so we run it like a business. I mean, we, we're not going to overspend on our revenue. So we look at our revenue on a quarterly basis, and we have a considerable amount of maintenance built into this budget. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, in the past, that's always been the area where the harbor has cut out. Um, and we will do our best to make certain we maintain what needs to be maintained from a safety standpoint first. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then we'll go from there. But we, do, we would have the ability, if next year's revenue um, would not make the numbers that we're looking at, to, to cut in some areas. So we'll be looking at that all year long. And I like at this point, if anybody has any ideas, to please forward them to Ted. You know, maybe you see something he doesn't in the harbor that could be adjusted to fit the budget better. This is a prime time to, to say, hey, I have an idea. Instead of seven guys cutting the grass, maybe two would be fine or something like that, even though that's under a contract. Mike, did you have something? Looking at the uh, calendar, we are supposed to meet again um, on the 15th of June. Are we going to stand by waiting further we can from the... Uh, we can go with it, if we, even if we have to do this. Do we want to leave it on the calendar? Yes. It, it's going to be your call, so we'll hold a meeting if, if you're prepared to hold the meeting. Then we'll hold the meeting on the 15th. Then we can come up with you know some ideas or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll follow whatever guidelines that are given to us by the uh, mm -hmm. county, city, Correct. state, city. Thank you. Any Joe? Um, just one more suggestion for the city accountant. Um, this, the harbor pays uh, the mud tax, we call it, the property tax under the slips. You also pay property tax on your boat. And that all goes to the county, and I understand the county distributes money back to the cities after collecting the taxes. If down the road you could figure out how much the harbor is actually contributing to the county, and how much money comes back from the county to the harbor. Because the county contributes to the police department. 
we fund our own police department. Maybe some of that county money could go to the Harbor Police Department since we are putting money into their fund. I know we apply for grants for ramp removals and repairs and stuff like that. And maybe that would be another avenue for the county, not that they're going to be loaded after all this, but we do pay money into the county and it comes back to the city. Does any ever come back to the Harbor from the county? Thank you. Any other comments? Before we adjourn today, I would like to also give our utmost thanks to Mark Robbins. He, this is his last meeting because of family issues. He's going to have to be resigning. Our heart goes out to you and our thanks. And if you need something, you've got people here that can help. Thank you, sir. At that time, I'd like to uh, make a motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. We'll see you on the 15th. Thank you. Okay.